Guys, I want to start this video off with a little public service reminder. Hey, hit that subscribe button because as you see from here, 95% of the people that watch my videos don't subscribe. So come on, help a brother out, hit the subscribe button, and then you'll know when I put up more videos, it might help you fix your four-wheeler. So, appreciate you ahead of time. What's up guys, Four Wheeler Doctor back again. Uh, today we're working on a highly anticipated 350 Rancher assembly video. It's been a while since I took this thing apart and just had all kind of other stuff going on. Actually, the main thing being that 450 Foreman that I had to do a full body off restoration on. But, uh, got that done now and, uh, we're going to start putting this motor back together. This is, a uh, about a 2001, 2002, something like that. This is a two-wheel drive model. Really doesn't matter. Pretty, pretty much the same exact motor as in the four-wheel drive motors, or as four-wheel drive models. Also, it's the same motor that's in the newer model ranchers too, um, air-cooled models. So this is a 2001. I think this, this uh, motor they used in there till about maybe 2003. I think they switched over in four or something like that. But this one here had to play in the crank. It was smoking. Um, so I got a new crank for it. This is a brand new one from Honda. Just out of that box. And uh, we're going to do the crank. I think I got a... Um, I know I got a set of clutches for it. Not 100% sure on the, um, the cam chain. It seems like the chain was good in this thing. And I had the cylinder board out with the uh, new Honda piston rings and all that. I was going to do the valve seals on it. So, uh start off with we're going to get started with putting the uh crank in this thing um normally when you pull the crank out this bearing the one crank shaft bearing uh comes out with it so you have to press it off it actually goes on um this end of the crank shaft it makes it easier if you press this thing back on here so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna push this back on here real quick and then i'll show what I line up in here because you have to get this balancer shaft lined up with the crankshaft um, when you go to put it back together. So let me get this bearing pressed on here and then I'll set all this up in my press and show you what it looks like to press the crankshaft back in. Alright, be back in a sec. Alright guys, I uh, wanted to show you one thing. This thing has a mark and I probably should have showed you this before I put the bearing on there. But there's actually a mark on this um, one tooth here. I knew I wouldn't be able to see it when I put the bearing on, so I ended up marking it with some blue um, paint. You can see it right there. So this balancer shaft has two ways to line it up. Um, if you if you're looking at the crank from this side, there's a mark here, and it lines up with that that mark. If you weren't thinking ahead uh, enough. Uh, and are going to do it as you press it in if you flip it over to this side Which is this is the side you'll be looking at as you press the crank in Riker, Get the crank in the picture uh, As you spin it around There's a mark here You can see that kind of raised up spot in the casting as well as a mark here on the gear And you can see as I rotate that gear around there to that that's where it lines up So you have to have that this mark here lined up or when you when this thing rotates around that um the weighted part will hit your crankshaft so let me get the uh get this put in the press and i'll cut the camera back on in a sec all right guys so this is the crank uh shaft crank case haft i'm sorry that you're going to be dealing with it's the deeper half this is actually the um rear half of the crankcase and i've got the uh crankshaft just sitting in here right now i just want to show you those uh markings one more time the camera was a little shaky a little bit ago my cameraman was it's early and he hadn't had his weeds yet so um the tick mark is right this dang thing is so bright tick marks right here on the on the um balancer shaft and then you can see that welded glob on there that's what you line up with so they're in there just sitting there i did put a little bit of oil on the um bearing and so we're going to stick this in the press. Uh, this is not the ideal way to do it. What I normally do to try to keep this um, crank, and it, I've never had an issue with this before, but what I normally do is try to shove a socket in here just as a spacer 
to uh, keep these crank halves from pressing together. Um, so I just shove a socket in there that will fit tight as I press it in. Also use a socket on this end just to keep from messing this up and uh, press it down till it stops. So uh, let me stick this in the press. I'm going to press it in. I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys, got the crank pressed in there. Actually, kind of upside down now. Um, so next thing we're going to do is put the transmission together. I keep all my transmission parts together in a box. It keeps from losing any washers or having gears fall apart because if you have to figure out where the gears go on the transmission, sometimes that takes some time. So what you need to do first is uh, get this shaft out here. This is actually all the gears on your transmission. Um... Don't quote me if I'm wrong on this, but first, second, third, fourth, fourth, fifth. That's how they work. Got these slides that slide back and forth as it shifts gears. And um, that's how it works. So got the shaft with all the gears on it, as well as this long shaft here. Uh, the shaft with all the gears on it, it does have a very thin washer on this end, as well as a washer on this end. Make sure you hold on to those. Same thing with this one. It's got a washer here. No washer on this end. This here actually goes on to the uh, change clutch. So that's how that goes in there. This here goes on your output gears. So I'm kind of holding them upside down. The way it all goes together is like this. And the easiest way to put it all in is to hold it pretty much in one hand like this and slide it in. Um, so they go in this shaft here will go into this bearing. This shaft here will go into this bearing. So they normally just slide right in very easily. Keep your fingers on the end of it to uh, make sure those washers don't fall off. Just like that. They won't rotate because it's um, not, it's, they ain't no telling what gear it's in. It's probably in first and third and fifth all at the same time. So uh, until you get the shift forks on there, which is going to be our next order of business, it won't... Um, it won't shift correctly <clears throat> all right so here's the shift forks these forks are pretty pretty common on all hondas they all have the same markings on them and all pretty much go in the same way uh they have it this this one here has an f so this is going to be the front of the bike this stands for front there's this one has a c for center this one has a rr for rear rear so the easiest way to put this on take the um, shaft out of these and it works a little easier if you can kind of tilt your transmission or your motor back uh, I'll see if I can let me see if I can tilt it back like this and still get a camera angle so y'all can see what I do let me move the camera around okay there we go hopefully you can see it um, the sh the um, Shift forks go in with these markings facing toward the front of the bike. The very first one you want to put in is that rear one. And what you want to look at is these pins on the bottom here. They have to line up with your shift drum. And your shift drum goes in this center hole here. Your These here actually go, the shaft for them actually go in the top hole. So you just thinking about it, kind of orient this um, this nipple to face your shift drum. And that should make it go in a little easier. I normally just kind of stick these things in there. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I've done them a few times or if I'm lucky. But they'll normally line up right on your um, on your slides that are on your shaft there. If I can get my big old hand in there to grab it. I got, hold on. Hold up just a second. The uh, my filmer just showed up. All right, I think that one's right. Like your head's in the camera. Um, actually, that ain't even the right one. Move, move your finger. All right, I, gra I had to. I grabbed the wrong. I told you what to do with it and grabbed the wrong one. I tried to put the center one in first, but we're actually dealing with the rear one first. That's what we need. The rear one goes on here. Rear one goes on this this shaft here. Try to show you this shaft here. So you can see as the pin sticks out kind of toward the 
shift drum okay might grab another light I'll tell these lights I got are too dang bright for you to even see on the camera oh no that works out we'll lay that up there until I get it stuck in alright so the next one we're gonna put in is the center one and since this uh has this has a nipple that sticks off the bottom it's gonna go on this this shaft about midways up there's a little slide that it needs to go into and then the last one's going to be our front one and it goes way up here at the top and what you want to do with these is just kind of orient them close to where you need to go um, what you want to stick in next matter of fact I might have to stick this um, output shaft in let's make sure the output shaft will slide in there sometimes these won't go in real easy so this is the output shaft. This is the rear. It uh, slides in this big bearing. Gotta kind of let it. There it goes. It'll fall in there. Okay. Sometimes the uh, gears get in the way of these output shafts. It actually won't go all the way down because it's hitting my cart. But that doesn't matter right now. Um, so next thing is our shift drum. Shift drum. This is the end that faces the front. This sticks out the back. Just go ahead and slide it in this hole. And uh, you see where it kind of rotates around a little bit. Now this is the somewhat uh tricky part you have to i'll pull this back out just so you can see what i'm doing but what you have to do is get this shift fork slid over closer to your hole that you're trying to line up with and sometimes you have to pick up on it to in order to get it in so the bottom one goes in this groove the middle one goes in this groove and the top one goes in this groove um, so in order to get them in those grooves sometimes you have to just take it and lift up on them see how see how it actually move just pick up on it like this and to, to get it to line up into your uh, to your groove so sometimes I can do it with my hands sometimes you stick a screwdriver in there and just barely pry up on it to get them to go in those grooves but you have to get them lined up in the grooves or your or it won't shift or it won't even go into neutral like it's supposed to so let me see if I can do that without too much effort here need to make sure that bottom one's gonna move up on me yeah it is so I got it about got it picked up about halfway up right now then I'm gonna slide my shift drum in there and I may actually be able to get them to fall together all at the same time Can't get my big fat hands in there. And I may actually move this shaft out of the way. It's not, it doesn't have to be in right yet anyway. One other thing you can do is where that uh, shaft is supposed to slide through there, you can grab that hole with a pair of pliers and lift up on it a little. You don't have to move these things very much and there it goes right there I don't know if you can see where it slid in there right here slid into that first one normally these slide a little easier than this this one's being a little bit tough so then pick the second one up till you get it to slide into a groove right there and then this third one's very easy because it's right here at the top slide into a groove and then slide your little shaft through uh, these aren't going to line up perfect. You just kind of kind of wiggle it around and actually it works sometimes if you take a little hammer and tap it just to make sure or to, just to help seat it all the way in because it has to go all the way through the bottom crankcase. There you go. I got them through all of the shift shift forks. Now keep tapping it to see if it's going to line up in the crankcase. Just like that. There we go. There again, I still don't know what gear it's in, 
but at least all the shift forks are lined up. Let me see if I can get you a good picture of that. I've had a couple of folks ask about those. So uh, there's the shift forks. You can see the bottom center and the in the front one all lined up on the shift drum. All right, that wasn't too bad. Spin this back down, and the next couple things we need to do. Guys, I didn't a rat over there in my shop. It's Riker. I don't know what in the world he's doing, but uh, he's making a commotion over there. Uh, so, next thing we're going to stick in, this is our reverse gear. It just goes up here on the top. Some of these are different. Uh, some of them have washers on them. Some of them don't. Some of them have spacers. Uh, this one doesn't have either. So, uh, it just slides in there, and then your shaft comes out the back. You can see how it goes. And... The last item that needs to go in will be this uh, shift shaft. And I'm not sure. Yes. So you rotate your um, rotate your shifter around. You can see it in here. See the shifter moving around. Slide this in there. This thing does have a washer on it here. Make sure you put that back on and it slides in this hole here and then you want to line up your your um, nipple that comes off of your shifter here through that hole on the very end of that so just like that all right um, I pulled that output shaft out just to give me a little bit of room while ago so we'll slide that back in there there again, it won't sit all the way in because uh, it's hitting my hitting my cart. So I'm gonna tilt this up. All right, so that's uh, pretty much all we got there. Transmission's done. Um, I like the the biggest my biggest uh, tip on this is when you take the thing apart, stick it in a box with some rags to hold everything together, because you just don't want to have to figure out where all those gears and stuff go. Um, next thing we're gonna do, put the other crankcase half together. Uh, the only thing we have to put in the other crankcase half, uh, aside from the dowels, there's two dowels, one here and one over here on this side. This side, doesn't, the dowel stayed on this. So we have to put this screen and this little tray in here. goes in here. These things are got a little bit of an angle shape to them. It goes in with the narrower side first. Actually, it works a lot better if you stick this all in there together at one time. I didn't do it because I'm filming with one hand and working with the other. So slide it in there like that. Push it down till it's flush. And that's it. You can see these things are clean. I run them through my parts washer. Well, my hand's dirty, but the parts are clean. Um, so I got everything cleaned up. I'm going to run around this with some brake cleaner uh, before I stick it together. Put some RTV on it, gray RTV, and slide them right together. So I'm going to do that. Um, stick the RTV and get ready to stick this thing together next. I'll cut the camera back on with the next step. All right, guys, got a little RTV on here. What I normally do is just dab some around here. It really don't take a whole lot and take my finger and smear it out. I see people that put a whole bead on here, act like they're caulking a bathroom tub in or something. You don't have to have all that. Uh, these, these things fit pretty tight. And the little bit of RTV I actually have on here, it'll still squish some of that out. But it <clears throat> just looks a little unsightly when you have, you know, a, a gob of RTV stuck around the crankshaft and, you know, we all about looks around here, so, uh, really I'm not, but that's what I do. So, uh, got all that together. Now, the easy part is just take this other crank, sh crank case half and slide it over top of all of our shafts we got on there now. I think I'm going to have an issue with my, uh, output shaft because I've got to tilt this thing up because my output shaft is, uh, not bottomed out completely. Let me do that, and hopefully this thing will seat all the way up. Let me try to get this thing flipped around. All right, so I got it uh, stood up now. It almost, I mean, we've got like an eighth of an inch gap, so it's pretty much closed all the way up. Uh, everything seemed to go together fine. I kind of had to rock it back and forth. You got to get all these shafts lined up, everything lined up in the bearings before it goes together. So uh, it did. And now we're going to stick a few bolts in this thing, uh, a few around the edges here flip it over and there's a few on the back side easiest way to keep up with the bolts and that just looks pretty ghetto but it works great uh piece of cardboard if you 
tear it apart but naturally this is one I've already used because it didn't get this dirty just on this motor but uh, if you start from the top work your way down then when you go to put the thing back together start from the bottom work your way up keeps up with the bolts they're actually in a uh, somewhat of a pattern as to how they go back in so lifesaver right there especially if you build as many as I do keeping up with bolts is one thing but uh, putting them back together quick is another so um, I'm gonna stick the bolts in there torque them down they're like uh, nine newton meters or something like that ten newton meters are very very light but I do go around and torque them just to make sure they're all tied all the way around and don't leave any loose so I'm gonna torque all those down I'll cut the camera back on once I get everything tightened up and we'll get to the next step all right, guys, I got everything torqued up on here. One other thing, uh, if you got some brackets, you got to stick back on here, particularly on these older model ones, uh, to hold these engine covers on. Got one on this side that goes through the engine bolts, and one on this is the left side rear that goes through the engine bolts there. So make sure you stick those on. All right, next thing we're going to do, I think we're going to do the rear end here, the, um, the rear of the engine, the flywheel gears and all that stuff back here. Let me get this thing flipped around, all the parts out. Cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys, we're here on the back side now. We're going to uh, get started with some cam chains first, or cam and the chain. Uh, start off with, got the cam here. Like I said, we're not going to replace the chain on this one because it was in pretty good shape. So um, slide this chain over top of the sprocket here, and the cam, chain go, or the cam goes in this hole. This is a 350 engine. Um, so what you want to look for is this tick mark here needs to face up and there's actually a tick mark here that says 350 on it and it goes to this era here and as far as the crankshaft goes it's a little hairy on the um, whole lining it up normally you have uh, you know the flywheel you can line up but you can't put the flywheel on until you put the cam on and you can't line the cam up with the flywheel because the flywheel is not on so what they do in this case is say to take the um, keyway there and just put it at the 12 o'clock position so it points up straight up and uh, that's where you line up your timing. So we're going to slide this thing in here. Lift up on your little tensioner arm there everything lined up right I'm off on my mark that's pretty close there it may may take you a couple times to get this uh lined up right and also may take you a couple times to get this cam to go in here because you got to line up the very end of it with a uh, bearing that's on the crank shaft or crank case kind of kind of wiggle it around then once you get it so deep in there, there's a bearing. Oops, sorry. There's a bearing on the front side here. Uh, a lot of times it just takes a tap on the hammer to get it to all the stars to align. So the rear is in there. Hundred percent sure why it's not sliding in there all the way. Oh, I know why it is. So the in this case, the bearing came off with the cam instead of staying in the crankcase. So I'm going to have to tap that bearing back in there. The bearing is going back into the um, to the recess on the crankshaft. That normally is not how it goes down. So let me get everything lined up here. It's going to take a little bit more force than just it sliding into the bearing. So there it is. Had to hit it just a little bit harder. But uh, as you can see. We're at the 12 o'clock position on here, and the tick mark is lined right up with the 350. This mark is also lined up with that little indention on the crank uh, crankcase, so it's it's in there lined up. Uh, next thing we need to do is put the holder in for the cam. It's a little bent piece of metal and a 10 millimeter headed bolt. It slides in right here. They usually recommend putting some Loctite on these things, so I'll put a little dab of it on there. And tighten it down. Can't get my Loctite to come out. There it goes. So, tighten it 
tighten that one down and that is all you have to do to get your get your cam in I will hit that with the torque wrench um, all right next thing we need to do this is a brand new crankshaft I knocked the keyway out of the old crankshaft you need to knock that back in there without that on the flywheel will just spin around and uh, it makes it tough to do a lot of stuff when the flywheel is not tight so tap that back in there uh, let me get the flywheel cleaned up I'll cut it back on right before I stick it stick it on and uh, show you how to do that all right guys I almost forgot I got to stick this tensioner on here uh, the way this tensioner works is it's spring loaded you just stick your finger in here and push down this little ramp piece with a spring behind it and then push your tensioner in and it'll and you can hold it right there with your finger and what I like to do I got some little pieces of wire here stainless steel wire if you stick a piece of wire through this hole right here it'll hold it so that'll keep your tensioner um, loaded I guess you'd call that until you get it uh, bolted up and take the two 10 millimeter bolts to hold it in it goes in right here at the top go ahead and bolt those in and once you get those two tightened up you can snap your spring out of there and it should be should put tension back on your on your chain I'll torque those down in a minute so just pull your spring out you can see that thing barely even moves so you got a bunch of life left in that chain that's one of the reasons we didn't replace it okay next thing I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna throw the output shaft gears on here uh, this bottom gear goes on the output shaft it seems like it's uh it's the same on both sides so um just considering there's a little looks like a little wear on this side where it's probably been hitting those pads we're gonna stick it back on this way slide right on there like that the top gear here slides on the that's for the shaft that came out of the transmission and it has this real thin washer that goes on it stick it on there next okay uh next thing we're gonna do is the flywheel uh, knock that keyway in uh, next thing you need to put in is the washer it goes behind the flywheel as well as this uh, bearing sleeve I don't really know what you call that type of bearing I did clean these up pretty good um, both the crankshaft as well as the inside of the flywheel with some brake cleaner don't want any oil on that because it, it's a tapered shaft and you do get a little bit of a, a skin friction that holds it on there as well as that keyway keeps it from spinning so um, just try to keep any any oil or anything off of it just to make sure you get a good uh good tight mating surface there all right so it slid right on there make sure your keyway lines up the slot here lines up with your um your key that's in there and what i like to do is um i've had these things before where you go to put the stator on here and this this uh, magnetizer it'll suck the flywheel off sometimes and then you don't know if you hit it back into keyway spot or not so what i like to do is go ahead and put the um the pull start cog on here uh it's also got a keyway that lines up with the one there on your uh, woodruff key slide it in like that and then go ahead and stick the bolt in it i hit that with the impact just tighten it down and then remove it all that way it just holds the flywheel down on there tight uh i'll do that in just a second as well actually I'm still going to have to tighten up the tensioner bolt, so don't forget to do that on yours. Okay, uh, next to the last thing we have to put in here is this uh, reverse, um, I'm going to call this a reverse safety lever. This is an electric shift bike, so the it's a little different than the foot shifts as far as this reverse safety goes. Um, this actually touches the um, shift drum and when you pull the push the red button down on the handlebars and squeeze the brake it turns this down so that the uh, shift drum will rotate one more time and go in reverse but one other thing that this has the electric shift models have that the uh, manual ones don't this little tab here actually contacts a um a pin switch on the back of the motor that will not even let the shift motor downshift until you have this pressed in and pulled down um so that's it looks a little different on this model just because it's an electric shift but uh foot shift pretty much works the same with the exception it doesn't have that um that additional sensor in there so i uh, got the spring kicked up here and what i like to do is just grab this with a pair of pliers and kind of rock it and 
twist it down in there all at the same time because it's got to go fairly deep into the shaft and into the shift drum just like that and you heard it bottom out um, and then that's pretty much it the spring slides down just a little and then like I say when you push the red button and pull the cable it, it pulls this down so the shift drum will shift one more time uh, while I'm back here one other thing I like to do just to make sure I get my um, make sure I get my shift drum in the right location is to put this thing in neutral so uh, the way you do it um, this is the end of the shift drum and it rotates around um, what you want to do is rotate it I'm not sure which way I need to go I normally just do this as trial and error go one way and if it don't work go the other way okay so what we got here I've rotated it around as far as I can go and what you need to do in this case is turn it counterclockwise you can hear it's that's as far as it'll go uh, shifted back to your counterclockwise if you take this lever and rotate it down it'll go one more time so that's reverse and what you want to do is just spin this thing back until that lever pops back up right there back it up as far as it'll go counterclockwise and that's neutral so um, when you get ready to put your back cover we'll cover it in a little bit <laughs> cover it in a little bit get it uh, we will uh, go over that in a little bit with the um, sensor back here that actually tells what gear it's in you need to have this thing lined up right actually the way it works is there's a there's a groove cut in it and then it's, it's supposed to line up with this little line here uh, that'll go a couple different ways according to how you rotate the shift drum so um, we know it's in neutral now and that should let us line up, line that switch up right when we get ready to put it on all right let me get that uh the tensioner torque down go ahead and hit this with the impact I'll get the back cover cleaned up and uh, cut the camera back on right before I bolt it up. All right, guys, I almost forgot. I said it a while ago. The next to the last thing we had to put in was this. So the last thing to put in is this reverse gear. Actually, not a reverse gear. This is a reduction gear, it's called. This is for the starter. And it goes in here. The big cogs of the gear go in first. And then that shaft slides in just like that. And that's what the starter meshes up to to crank the motor over. All right, so let me get that back cover cleaned up, and I'll cut the camera back on right before I slide it on. All right, guys, got the back cover ready to go on. Uh, cleaned up this with some um, some brake cleaner. Got a thin layer layer of RTV stuck on our cover here. Uh, the biggest thing on this cover before you stick it on is, like we talked about before, the shift sensor. Uh, I'm gonna grab a flashlight here and see if I might can show you. You should be able to see on yours if you can't see it on mine. There is a an N stamped into the let's see how what kind of job my camera can do here look at that there's an N right there stamped into this piece of plastic and if you can tell there's not much difference but this shaft here has a short side and a long side that long side should point toward that end right and you can so you can rotate this thing around but uh, make sure your long side is pointing toward the end before you slide this thing on and if you have this shift shaft in neutral and have this pointing to the end it should slide right back together uh, this is pretty crucial in getting this right because if you ever stick all this back together and then the four wheeler is not showing neutral on, from this shaft because it got twisted around or pushed back into the shaft, uh, sensor or whatever you can't crank the thing up because it won't crank unless it's in neutral so this is pretty critical to get this right and I've worked on numerous bikes that people have tried to take apart and uh, did not get this right on them and put them back together and naturally they won't crank and it's a lot easier to fix right now with the motor laying here on the cart than it is once you get this motor put back in the bike because you don't have a whole lot of room to work with so um, make sure you get that right I'm going to show you. It almost pushed all the way back in. There's a couple dowels. I didn't mention that. There's a dowel here on this bolt hole and a dowel here on this bolt hole that uh, had to be put in there as well. Mine were still stuck in there, so I didn't, I didn't remove them, so I didn't replace them. And right there, I just pushed it down with my fingers, and you can see it's, it's closed pretty well completely up so there was no resistance whatsoever on that switch you really can't check it even looking in there now there's just not enough room in there but uh just make sure you get that right um so you don't have problems cranking it later all right let me get all these 10 millimeter bolts put on and then we're going to stick the uh, stator on
Also, one other thing, don't forget your bracket goes on right here for the right rear of your engine. Alright, got the uh, gasket cleaned off of the old stator cover. Uh, we're going to put a new one on here and shoot a little bit of just RTV on these um, um, mating locations where your wires go through. Got one on the, on the left side here, there's one on the right too. Uh, two dowels to go in here. Got those already slid in, putting the gasket on there the wrong way. There we go, that's the correct way. Got it stuck on. And then uh, same thing on the stator cover here. Put a little bit of RTV where these rubber uh, grommets are just to provide a little bit of extra sealant there. And then you just slide this thing on. Get your dowel holes lined up. It'll usually just about snap right back on there like that slap it and uh stick the bolts in there and we'll put our um pull start back on here got to get your dowel hole or your uh, slot lined up on it tighten that back down i'm gonna go ahead and stick the starter on it just slides through here it's good to put a little bit of oil on the o-ring for the starter two bolts to hold it on and i'd also remove the speed sensor pretty tough to get um actually i think it's practically impossible to get uh, this bolt out if you have the speed sensor still installed so uh, i'm going to stick it back on with the two bolts and that should be pretty much everything on the rear here until we get it back on the bike so let me get all this tightened up and we'll flip around to the front side all right guys now we're on the front side here uh i'm thinking i can get the right um pattern together here for putting all this stuff together because there's some old tubes that there's some old tubes that have to go together and washers and all sorts of stuff hopefully i can get it together right first thing we're going to do is put this uh star piece here on the uh shift drum it's a um six millimeter uh hex head and put some loctite on that thing because uh I've actually had trouble with these things backing off on pretty much all of the um, Honda Honda bikes. They'll they'll back off sometimes and make them do all kind of crazy shifting and all that. So uh, the biggest thing you need to do is make sure that this there's a um, one of the notches in here is larger than all the other ones. That one large notch has to mesh up with that pin that's in the end of the uh, shift drum. Uh, usually I can pry that down with a screwdriver get the uh, arm out of the way this one's a little tougher than normal so I'm going to uh, do it with a pair of pliers twist it down like this see where your piece is it's actually got a um, a little notch here to show you kind of where that part is that you need to line up I'm gonna start this with my finger first and then hit it with the impact well, don't have the bit in the impact, so let me change that out. All right. So, y'all have to excuse the background noise. Riker's got a football game going over out on the street. So, uh, tighten this on down. And this thing is just, uh, it's actually a fairly good sized bolt, um, but it calls for like 17 foot pounds on the torque and i do recommend torquing that down because like i said i've had trouble with uh those things backing off on on me from time to time gotta get the torque wrench in there there we go got that tightened down okay and uh next thing we're gonna do put the gear on our crankshaft here make sure you get your washer slides right down on there like this all right next part we're going to need i believe we're going to need to put our um, oil pump in and with the oil pump i bought the um i bought the gears to rebuild this thing let me clean me off a spot over here on the cart so i can show you how to do it and i'll show you how to take this thing apart and uh, put the new gears in it and uh, rebuild the oil pump 
All right, here's the oil pump here. I had it in a bag, so everything's still here together with it. Three bolts to hold it in. They're all the same size, so we'll lay those to the side. Uh, there's also um, two dowels with O-rings on them here. Stick those to the side as well. And I ordered uh, all four of these. I'm calling them gears. You can call them whatever you want to. Uh, I think they're called gears. Anyway, they go inside the oil pump here. Um, just a uh, kind of a easy way to, or, a, or a, just something to do just to make sure your oil pump or your oil pressure up to what it needs to be. I like to rebuild these things whenever I can. Um, sometimes, sometimes parts for the Honda stuff, um, you just can't get them, but this one here I actually could, so I ordered all of them. Anyway, 8 millimeter bolt on the back side, take it off, and then your oil pump will start coming apart. Alright, here's uh, your first set of gears. These gears, the easiest way to tell them apart is they're different thicknesses. Uh, one of them looks like about an eighth of an inch thick, and one of them is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Naturally, the two eighth of an inch pieces mesh together, and the two sixteenth of an inch pieces mesh, mesh together. So, uh, I'll go ahead and pull these back side off. The way it normally works is you have to start on one end and work your way to the other end. And once you get to the other end, you should be able to get it completely apart. Just like that. Alright, so this is the this is the thinner uh, gears. And be careful, there's a dowel pin that, that actually makes these things spin. So hang on to the dowels. So hang on to the dowels and um, the thinner portion goes toward the front of the oil pump. So I've got the two thin ones here. I'm going to um, replace these with the two new ones. Um, this is the outer piece and the inner piece. The It, it pretty much just lays in here like this. And then this other portion lays in the middle of it and you stick your um, got to rotate it around to get it to fit in there there we go you stick your shaft back in there with the dowel on it get the dowel in the very center so it meshes up there you go that part's done this is the end that it came off of let me wipe this off a little bit there's a little bit of crud in it It also has a washer that goes down on this shaft. So put the washer on, flip this over. This goes down on here like this. I'm sorry, that ain't right. I wasn't supposed to flip it over. It came apart just like that. I'm sorry. Alright, dial back in there like that. Washer back on it. You don't flip it over. It goes on like that. And then the next part is the other dowel. And your other two pieces, or two gears, I'm sorry. The outer portion and the inner portion. thing will pretty much just go back together one way so it's not not like it's rocket science putting it all back together yeah, that's pretty much it slid it back on there Let's see how the gears go in kind of wiggle them around they'll they'll mesh up like they're supposed to there's also a dowel that goes in here um let me see which section does it go in they usually go in inside like this one has a dial there's where it goes right there it goes in here dial just lines all the portions up then when you put that back cover on there it holds the dial in so uh like that and then put this 10 or 8 millimeter headed bolt back on there tighten it down a little bit and you're good make sure it rotates fairly free and it well it don't Let's see what's going on here. Yep. There you go.
Seems like it's about too tight for some reason. Slide this back apart and see. The only thing I'm thinking about is that um, washer. I believe the washer goes on this second. pin back in here so the washer on the second run here I believe is going to work better I think that's where it was before and I just uh, didn't pay attention when I took it apart so that slide this back on there you go now you got free spin so if you put the washer in this portion it binds up the shaft and it will not spin so got free movement now put these uh dowels and o-rings back on here just like this and then we'll get ready to bolt it back up so it bolts in let me take this up you got to line this um portion up here with that slot that's in the end of that shaft i think that's uh that's actually part of the balancer shaft. Um, let me see which way this thing goes. It goes in here like this. I'm sorry. Got it all twisted up. All right, just like that. Put your four bolts back in there. Uh, tighten those down, and then you're ready to put your... Um, oil tubes in next so let me get uh get that tightened down and then i'll put the oil tubes in next all right next thing we're going to stick in is this short oil tube it's got two o-rings on each end these have a little bit of oil on them so it should be plenty to let it slide into these holes so get it lined up slide down over the holes just like that one 10 millimeter headed bolt to hold it down all right and that should be it okay now um the other oil tube that goes in it actually goes across, this is it here, it's a long one. Uh, it goes across the engine like this. Um, as you can see, it all, none of this stuff will go in there, nor will this uh, change clutch go in with that tube in there. So we're going to have to install that a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, put our shifter stuff in here. Um, let's see if I can get the camera down a little bit so you can see better. All right, so here's the shift shaft. And first thing to go on is O-ring, O-ring, a washer. Put the washer in. Put the thing, whatever this thing is. These are the parts that break a lot. These things here. This is actually the upgraded version. They're thicker than the than some of the older ones, but they hold up a lot better. So this slides over this shaft. Uh, you got to get get it in the right keyway or get the keyway lined up so it will slide all the way down make sure it goes over this pin goes all the way down on there and it did so uh, that's good okay uh, next thing to put on I think um, hang on just a second I got Riker over here wanting something all right next thing we're gonna stick on is this change clutch uh, make sure you're bush in here that goes on the back of your change clutch is still in there uh it slides right over the shaft here sometimes you have to kind of wiggle it around a little bit to get it get it to line up on those uh splines there they are and also to get this gear here to line up everything's lined up there you got a washer that goes on and then a nut that's a 24 millimeter nut <clears throat> tighten that thing down i usually I honestly don't know what the torque spec is on it, but I uh, normally just hit it pretty good with the impact, and then it stakes, so uh, make sure you knock, knock a dent in the um, little keyway there, keep it from backing back off, and um, then I think we can install, finally install this shaft, yes, or this, not shaft, this uh, gear, 
this is not a gear either this uh, oil tube i'm sorry my brain's not working right today for some reason so uh there's two bolts that hold it in one of them is this one with the little arm on it and it goes in here just tighten that one down like that and it lays on top of that um oil tube the other one goes in here at the bottom so uh, put it in put it in tighten it down um only other things we've got to stick on here is going to be the well let me go ahead and get this tightened up then we'll put the uh centrifugal clutch on as well stake it down just like you do with this nut it also has a washer actually let me get all this stuff tightened up and i'll cut the camera back i want to get the centrifugal clutch ready all right one thing i forgot about the centrifugal clutch i did buy a kit to uh rebuild this thing i uh, used to you had to use honda stuff and they all it sold was uh the separate shoes for it see these things here are wore down pretty good this thing slipped real bad so um doesn't have any grooves or anything worn into the um to the clutch drum there but uh those those shoes are worn out so uh i ended up buying just a kit on online uh these are aftermarket they're a whole lot cheaper than the uh than the factory stuff and had pretty good luck with them as far as uh, them lasting a good while um, this kit also came with another one-way bearing uh, the one-way bearings in here uh, just to make sure you can check this bearing actually is still good but I'm gonna replace it just because I got a new one but um, you rotate this thing you can see it spins and the uh, drum doesn't spin when you turn it counterclockwise but as soon as you turn it clockwise it locks up and um, that's the way it's supposed to work that's actually where you get your engine braking from uh, if you ever get one of these that the um, engine brake doesn't work or whenever you switch it off you can hear the something in the motor still spinning most of the time it means that one-way bearings bad and it's letting this thing spin in both directions uh, it'll still work clutches still work but the the uh, engine braking lots of times will not work when the one-way bearings bad so uh, we need to make sure we get this bearing and it'll actually fit in there one way and flip it over and fit the other way so it can make this thing, you can put it in backwards, what I'm saying. So uh, make sure that you can turn it free counterclockwise and it spins the drum when you turn it clockwise. So uh, pull the old set of clutches out, pull the old one-way bearing out. The new one's here in the bag. Gotta be careful with these things too. The little, um, the little weights here will fall out on you. It does have outside stamped on it as well as the factory one did too. Um, so just make note of that. This is the outside here. So that's the way it should be installed you Slide this other one in sometimes you have to rotate them to get them to fall into place, right? Just like that and then here again. This is the new shoes and the new one way. It doesn't spin when you turn it to the uh, Counterclockwise and as soon as you turn it clockwise it spins. So that's the way it's supposed to work All right, so now we can just take this slide the camera back over and uh, install it onto our crankshaft here slides right down over top get the splines lined up so that uh, it goes all the way down all right and then this also has a washer uh, the same way that the change clutch did uh-oh somebody's calling all right let me get this all right guys so now we're just gonna have to tighten up uh this nut here I might have said it a while ago these are 24s they're actually 27 millimeters this nut and this nut on the change clutch uh, and i usually just hit them good with the impact and stake them and they'll stay on with that so let me get that done i'll cut the camera back on when i put the remaining uh clutch pieces here on and we'll be we're about ready to put the front cover on this thing so let me get all that together all right guys so the last of the uh, clutch pieces to go in here are uh, this center part that goes into the change clutch with the bearing in it it just slides right in there pretty tight um, the this arm here slides on this shaft it's got a keyway that it slides into it really only go on there one way the this this arm also has a washer to go on the outside of it and the last two pieces to go on are this piece here this part goes in this bearing and this forked piece goes around this arm here and that's actually the what engages the clutch it's kind of a pretty cool setup on this 
Um, so, and then the part with the three balls goes on there, and the spring goes toward the engine, just like that. The way this thing works uh, is most folks don't probably don't never even thought about this, or some of them might not even care. But uh, when you shift gears on this thing, it, it does two things. It actually engages this clutch, like would work like a normal hand clutch on a regular uh, street bike. It engages the clutch as well as shifts the gears pretty much all at the same time. I know you've probably seen people hold up on the uh, shifter, which you can't do it on this one because it's electric shift, but the manual shift ones hold up on it. What they're doing is engaging this clutch. And when you let down, it's in gear and it releases this clutch, and that's why they'll pop wheelies and all that stuff. But uh, these clutches very seldom wear out because you can't ride the clutch like you can on a street bike um, because you, it's either pretty much on or off with the with your foot lever in this case the uh the um electric solenoid that that pops it up and down so that's how it works it's um that's the simple what uh ex explanation of it but pretty neat how, how it does it all right so i'm gonna clean this up with some brake cleaner clean up the uh the inside of the front cover put a little bit of rtv on it and we'll stick this thing together i'll uh, cut the camera back on right before i uh, put the, start putting the bolts in it. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this front cover on. I got it cleaned up real good. Put another little thin layer of RTV around it, and it should just slide right on here, just like that. Actually, looks like this uh, seal here is kind of kicked out on that um, shifter. Let me straighten that up on the emergency shifter shaft. Straighten that up. I don't have to do that. Cut the camera back on in a sec. All right. Uh, sorry about that. I had a little issue with a seal here. The spring had popped out of it, but I got it back in there now, so we should be good to go. Uh, now we got to do slide this thing back on here. Got the dowel here on it, and the dowel still here. Uh, everything else is still on here, so everything should mesh right up. Um, biggest thing is getting our shift shaft through our hole because that's actually the only thing that sticks through the um, sticks through the front cover just like that seats all the way up stick all the bolts in there then uh, I'm gonna lay it down and we will start on the cylinder and head part of it and uh, we'll do that in a little bit all right guys last thing we got to put on here I meant to say this while ago is this last bracket goes on here uh, on this front cover so that's the last thing to put on to button up the front cover all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and stick this electric shift stuff in if you got a manual shift model you can skip ahead a minute or so it don't take long to get this in so this won't really pertain to you but uh whatever you do or not whatever you do this is what you do um first thing you need to do is get all your parts together i think i got everything here laying with me uh it's pretty much these three gears and I believe the way they go in here, this big one here goes in first with the finer tooth toward the, the finer and larger tooth toward the uh, case. Then this piece goes on next. It kind of centers up on this shaft. As you can see that's kind of in the center there. And then the last one is this one. Goes with the coarser teeth to the bottom. This is actually what your shift motor uh, attaches to or, or makes turn. So it uh, shifts the gears, and then your shift motor. I got the shift motor and the cover just unbolted it as one unit. The uh, angle sensor is still on there. So um, slide all this on. It has an O-ring on it, so you don't have to worry about putting any kind of RTV. And wiggle it down. Sits in there like that. The only other part you have to put on is this cover here for your um, electric shift uh, angle sensor. So got two bolts there bolt there and a bolt there and that should be everything uh when you put all this back together in the bike make sure you plug your angle sensor up as well as your shift motor up and uh should be good to go all right so let me get this uh top end started up and i'll cut the camera back on in a second all right guys so i've got another head in um i've already put the exhaust valve in it with the new valve seat i mean valve seal uh, i'm going to show you how to take this intake valve out and just how I do to clean them up, lapping them, and all that stuff. I've got this apparatus here. This is actually a valve spring compressor. It's for a, actually for an automotive application. 
but it works great for um, most of these Honda valves. See if I can rock the camera up here so you can see what we got going on. It just works like a big C clamp. You just press down on it, and it um, goes down to where the keepers there can be released. And then once they get down so far, you can actually can just pull them off with your hand. Be very careful with careful with these because they'll fall off and uh, get lost, about like the clip for the piston wheel too. So I usually have a magnet to pull them off with, but uh, today I'm living on the edge and doing it with my hand. Didn't lose any yet. All right, there you go. So you let, release the pressure. Comes off like that. All right, and then now we're gonna have to swap this uh, this valve and spring and all this stuff to the other head. Uh, it's a double spring. I just keep those all together. Push your valve out the bottom like that. It's just got a little bit of crud on it. So I'm gonna hit that with the wire brush, knock it off, and then I'll show you how to lap these things. So let me uh, let me get that cleaned up with a wire brush. I'll cut the camera back on in just a sec. All right, guys, uh, back again. Got the uh, valve here. I'm gonna put some of this um, valve grinding compound on it. Just dab it around there where the um, valve meshes up with the valve seat. And I usually use this little suction tool here, but the one I did on that exhaust it just never would seal up i think my little uh, plunger there's about had it so we're going to do the other method that um i use time to time is with a drill so stick your um valve through here like this you got your stem stuck out this side and you can take your drill and and uh clamp it on that stem you don't have to do it real hard because you're not trying to drill a hole in this thing but just uh run it and pull pull the drill back and forth actually i didn't have it tight enough because it come off the valve but uh pull the drill back and forth and as you pull it work it in and out <clears throat> it um will kind of suck some of the valve grinding compound in there kind of grinds the seat up really it just cleans it up you're not really um like recutting them or anything like that but it just makes you get a better seal on your valve when you do put it back together all right now this stuff's just water based you can just wipe it off um when you're done with it and what you want to check on here when you do get finished is to check your valve seat there and make sure you got a pretty consistent width all the way around um if you don't have any spots that were skipping you can have a um like a burnt valve sometime will leave a bad spot in the um, in the seat and then on the actual valve here you can see the light gray area that's where it uh, ground it down where it met the seat and see it's almost perfect all the way around so that looks like it's going to be a, a good seat for the valve all right next thing we need to stick on is uh, a valve seal ordered some from Honda um, there are different styles that these different Hondas use, but these here are about the most simple. It's just like a rubber little cap with a little spring on it that holds it on. Uh, and you can just push these on with your finger. Don't take much to to slide it over there. I kind of work one side down and, or hold one side down and work the other one over top. Make sure it's seated all the way down in there. Um, there's a little washer that goes below this spring. Most of the time these don't come off, but this is... Um, used head I got didn't have these so I uh, pulled them off of the other head that slides in there stick your valve in there and your spring and then clamp your compressor back on it just like that get the camera up a little bit and then I usually press it down a pretty good little ways you get uh, past the stem and then stick the the little keeper in there the little keepers are they kind of have a thinner side and a thicker side the thick side goes to the top it actually acts like a wedge when you put it in here and uh, as the spring presses back on the back side of it it, it kind of wedges it in there so it doesn't come back out and that's pretty much it I also like to take a hammer if I've got one laying here which I probably don't Take a hammer and tap it 
just to make sure those uh, keepers are seated in there. There you go. And that's it. I did clean the bottom of this thing up with some Scotch-Brite. Um, so now we're ready to put it back on the on the motor here. Let me grab me a head gasket and uh, we'll jump to the motor here in just a second. All right, guys, ready to put the uh, head on this thing. I've got the, never had a problem with this and really never seen many of them that were bad. But uh, I'm going to end up reusing this head gasket on this thing. It's a metal head gasket. Put some copper seal on it to uh, seal it up and it should be good to go actually I need to put some um, dowels in here as well I have, this was a new cylinder so the dowels weren't in it naturally and let me find the other one here it goes I believe it goes in this one Alright, well, um, it'll slide down when I put this on it. Alright, so now we're ready for the head. Um, there ain't much to it. Just slide it over here. Line your, line your holes up. It works best if you put that gasket on there like I did first. Um, and the dowels in the bottom part. Because sometimes if that thing gets kicked around, those dowels will catch the edge of that gasket. And they'll actually rip a hole in the, in the gasket. Um, had that happened before so uh, now we need the, uh, the acorn bolts I think I've got one that was missing here but I believe I found it in the box now I've got to find it on my cart I don't know where it is but we'll there it is all right so next we got the acorn bolts and um, you can kind of look at these things the shiny ones go on the inside the dirtier ones go on the outside just from the uh, dirt and grime, from the mud and everything that get on them. Okay, next thing we need to put on before we put the uh, rocker arms on there is the push rods. Push rods are here. Clean them up just to make sure they don't have any crud on them. Slide them down in there. They kind of they pretty much won't go in there but one way. Slide this one in. Alright. And now put a rocker arm thing, a rocker arm holder, I guess. The cup side naturally goes toward the um, push rods. Slide that down. There's two dowels on there. See, they're still pretty loose, but the head actually is not sitting all the way on there either. So uh, stick the washer, acorn on here, washer and the acorn on here. I'm going to uh, torque these things down. They're supposed to be torqued to uh, 29 foot-pounds, the acorn bolts. This 12 millimeter goes down to 22 foot-pounds. I'm going to do it in increments of, I don't know, probably, I'll probably do them 10, 20, and then 29 on the big ones and do it in a cross, uh, you know, a uh, crisscross pattern. Tighten this one, this one, jump around to evenly press this head down. Uh, I'll do the big ones first and then the, um, the 12 millimeter last because it's a lower torque and then we'll put these two 10 millimeter headed bolts uh, that go through the cylinder and everything put those in last so let me get those tightened down i'll cut the camera back on uh probably gonna get ready to adjust the valves so we'll do that next all right guys now we're ready to adjust the valves on this thing um it's probably real close to top dead center right now but i'm still going to rotate it around just to show y'all if you do get it off the of top dead center uh what it's going to do um, what you want to look for here, we got to rotate this, um, the crank. I didn't put the pull start back on this thing. Um, sometimes the pull starts don't work on these half the time, but, uh, that way I can still get to this, uh, 17 millimeter nut. I'm going to be probably going to be able to turn this one over with my hand, but, uh, if I can, I can always run it around with the nut, but uh, we're going to rotate this thing. You rotate this crankshaft. If you're looking from the back of the bike, you're going to rotate it clockwise until the, intake valve <clears throat> goes down or opens and comes back up and closes once that happens then you start looking into the timing hole over here and i'll show that to you in just a second uh for the uh t mark that's on the flywheel actually there'll be an f mark first there's two tick marks first then you'll come to a, 
F mark, then you'll come to a T mark, and the T mark is where you stop. That is the uh, top dead center on the compression compression stroke. So um, that's where you need to adjust your valves. At that point, both of these valves should be fairly loose. I'm not sure what they're going to do on here since we done so much work with this thing, but if you bike it, hadn't been took apart, um, both of these should be fairly loose at the uh, at the top dead center. So I'm going to rotate it around. We're going to watch for this valve to uh, open and then close back. Okay, so this is the exhaust valve opening, closing. There goes the intake valve, opening and closing. And now, look up in this timing hole here, and I'm going to get a flashlight once I get to the, uh, to the tick marks, and rotate this around slowly and look for these tick marks. Uh, I'm going to cut the camera back on until I get them, and then I'll cut the camera back on just to show, or cut it off until I get to the tick marks, and I'll show you what they look like, or try to. You can see this. This is the two tick marks. I'm going to see if I can get the flashlight up in there to where you can see them. Let's see. There they are. You see those two uh, indentions in the flywheel in there? And then that um, arrow, that little cast out piece that's on the side of the block there. Let me try this dimmer flashlight and see if that might show better. Uh, there you go. That makes it a little bit better. So there's a tick mark, and then you're trying to line up with this little arrow off the side. And then you rotate it around just a little bit more. I'm going to see if I can hold the camera. I know you're not going to be able to see this until I get it rotated around. Okay, then you come to a mark with an F on it. And that's actually where the engine fires. Try to get it in there, right there. See the line in the F, and then the next next one you come to, you're not you're not rotating this very far. It doesn't take once you get to the two tick marks, it doesn't take long to get to the other marks you're trying to shoot for. Okay, and there we are. There's the T mark with the the T is actually over top of the tick mark, but you can see that tick mark is lined up perfectly with the, um, the little cast piece in the top. I'll try to show, the, show you the T, but you can barely see it in there. You might just have to take my word for it. There's a T. T mark in there. Uh, my dang flashlight is too bright. Anyway, it's on the T. Okay, so that should be top dead center on the compression stroke. And with all that getting lined up, now we're ready to adjust the valves. So checking these valves, that is the intake valve. You can see it's loose. The exhaust valve is actually still tight. Um, probably what happened was this the exhaust valve was the one that had that um, the uh, valve seat. It was kind of rack, rocked up on the um, old head. So this was probably adjusted to that. So, and you can kind of tell this one's cranked way down because the um, you only have a little bit of an adjuster out, and you can actually see threads on this one. So, there uh, it was. It was off. So we're going to get this back right. Uh, what we're shooting for here is uh, 0.15 millimeters, 0 0.006. Uh, that's thousandths of an inch, um, and it slides under. Where this little, where the little uh, adjuster sticks out, it slides under there. You want to slide it under until you've got a slight resistance. And let me see if I can do that real quick. I think my battery's about run out on my camera. But anyway, you uh, slide it under there and turn this center adjuster down. This is a flat screwdriver. That screwdriver is actually broken. So a flat screwdriver to tighten it down until you get slight resistance on it and then hold that center adjuster and tighten up that lock nut like that right there that one feels good so here this one's super tight we're gonna have to back it way off in order to even get the feeler gauge in there there it goes you can kind of feel when it breaks loose Alright, so that one's got some resistance on it. Hold it tight and tighten that adjuster back down. That might 
might be too tight. The adjuster spun with the lock nut. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes you have to kind of compensate for that. Crank it back a little bit too far and then uh, let the adjuster spin it in the position that it needs to go. Still tight. So, I guess you kind of get the gist of this. Tighten it down. There you go, resistance on that one, resistance on that one, you're ready to go. Alright, so next thing to do will be to put your valve cover back on, four bolts on it. Uh, put your, I didn't, I don't think I even showed that, the, uh, the adjuster is a, like a 5 millimeter Allen head. Uh, put that back in the, where you find your timing hole. Pull the start back on and uh, these side covers on this older model bike. And then it's ready to go back on the bike. So I um, probably won't have a video of this thing running. I've done that on every other video I've ever done. But uh, if y'all want to see a motor run, just check on my other, one of my other videos. Because I'm trying to go ahead and get this thing uploaded pretty quick. Because I've had a lot of people uh, asking about it. So appreciate y'all watching. Check out my other videos. Hit the like button. Subscribe. i got a bunch of stuff on here for a bunch of Hondas. A bunch of Rancher stuff. All kind of stuff. Y'all hit, hit the like button. Subscribe. And Check me out. Have a good night.